Hey what's up it's Ryan and in this video I'm going to show you multiple ways to weld or merge vertices in Blender. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. So assuming that you are familiar with vertices, which are the individual points that allow you to manipulate the shape of a 3D object, I will be showing you various methods for welding these vertices together. But before we begin, let me briefly explain the significance of welding or merging. To begin with, it's important to note that welding and merging are essentially interchangeable terms for the same process. While some software applications may use the term welding, others may use merging. In this video, I'll be using the term merging since that's the term that Blender uses. Merging vertices is essential as it helps ensure that the model is structurally sound and visually appealing. Merging two or more vertices together result in a single point, which effectively eliminates gaps and inconsistencies within a 3D model. This is particularly important when creating complex shapes and curves, as small gaps or inconsistencies can make the model look jagged or uneven. Merging vertices also helps reduce the number of polygons or faces in a 3D model, which can improve the model's performance and make it easier to work with. By reducing the number of polygons, the model's file size can also be reduced which can be important when working with large or complex models. Inaccurate merging of vertices can lead to various issues during subsequent stages of 3D modeling, such as unwrapping, texturing, or even importing the model to a game engine. To avoid these problems, it's crucial to merge vertices accurately. Overall, merging vertices is an essential part of 3D modeling as it helps ensure that the model is structurally sound and visually appealing while also improving its performance and reducing its file size. So with that out of the way, let's merge some vertices. I've prepared several examples to cover multiple techniques, so we'll work our way through them starting with this one. So for this one we have a symbol cube that's been split into two separate objects, as you can see right here. Now if we were trying to merge them together, as they are now, we wouldn't actually be able to do that because they're separate objects. To be able to merge something together, they need to be part of the same object. They can still be separate elements, but not separate objects. So the first thing we need to do is join the pieces together. So we'll select them both and hit Ctrl J to join them together, making them a single object. So now we'll select our object and go into edit mode. So at first glance, it may look like the cube is whole, but if we select one of these vertices, you can see that we have a split. If we change our selection type to face and hover the mouse over one of the halves of the cube and hit L on our keyboard, you can see that we can still select both elements independent of one another. So that shows us that it's still in two pieces. So what we need to do now is merge it together. So I'll switch back into vertex mode for this first technique. And we'll also enable X-ray mode. That's located over here. Enabling X-ray mode is necessary because multiple vertices located in the same position can conceal one another. By enabling X-ray mode, we can select anything that may be hidden, ensuring that no vertex remains unselected. We'll also enable statistics, just so that we can keep track of our vertices. So we'll go over here to overlay, select this arrow and enable statistics. Okay, so now that we have X-ray mode and statistics enabled, we're going to click and drag through the center of the model to select all the vertices we want to merge together. So if we take a look over here at the stats, you can see that it says we have 16 of 34 vertices selected, which is correct because we're selecting eight vertices from each element. Now, if we hit M on the keyboard, to bring up the merge menu, we have a few options here. We'll go through them all, but for now, select by distance. Now, if you look towards the bottom of the screen, it's notifying us that it's removed or merged eight of the vertices, which is exactly what we want. Now, if we look at the bottom left of the screen, we can see this little window. If we open it, it allows us to adjust the merge distance. The higher the value, the larger the distance a vertex can be merged from. If we push this too high, it begins to collapse in on itself. So just be careful when adjusting this. We also have these other options. If we enable unselected, it will allow you to merge both selected and unselected vertices together. And the second option, sharp edges, is a bit more complicated, but it calculates the sharp edges using custom normal data. But don't worry about either of these as they're generally ignored. So all you really need to use is the distance slider. 
So we'll make sure our slider is back to the default. And if we check our info, you can see that it now says we've got eight of 26 selected compared to earlier, which said 16 of 34, which basically means we've successfully merged eight vertices. So now if we change the selection type to face over here and hover over our model and hit L on the keyboard, you can see that our model is a single element, which again shows us that we've had a successful merge. For our second example, we're going to use the same object as before. It's again two separate objects, so we're going to select them and hit Ctrl J to join them together. Then we're going to go into edit mode, make sure that we'll have vertex mode selected, and then enable extra mode once again. So now, just like before, we're going to select the 16 vertices in the center of our object. We'll hit M on the keyboard to explore some of the other options, starting with at center. So at center combines selected vertices by finding the average position of those vertices. While it's not the exact center of the object, the function calculates the center distance between the selected vertices and averages out the distance between them to determine their common point. So I'll just undo that and hit M to bring up another option. Next, we have at cursor. So this is talking about Blender's cursor tool over here. If you haven't moved your cursor, it should still be in the center of your scene. To change the location of the center tool, just select it and click somewhere in your scene. So with all of our vertices still selected, we'll hit M and select at cursor. So as you can see, it merged our vertices at our cursor's position. Okay, so I'll undo that. And if you want to reset your cursor, use the shortcut Shift C. Okay, so we'll move on to the final option in that menu. So we'll hit M one more time and select Collapse. The outcome of this one looks similar to Sender, but it actually has a different use, which I'll show you now. So I've opened a new scene here to explain how the Collapse feature actually works. We have this cube here, and upon entering edit mode, you'll see that the cube has been subdivided twice to enable merging of vertices on its surface. So we'll select a few of these vertices and hit M and go to Collapse. What it's essentially doing is collapsing the selected vertices in on itself. Okay, so we'll move on. So we'll undo that. And for this next method, we'll select two vertices by clicking on one and shift clicking on the other. Now if we hit M, we have two new options. So we'll select at first, which will make the vertices merge to the first vertex selected. So we'll undo that and hit M once again and select at last, which will merge the vertices to the last selected vertex. You can even select multiple vertices and still use these features. Okay, so let's undo that. Now I'm gonna show you a technique that I use a lot myself. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over here to this magnet icon and enable it. Then go to this little arrow to the right of it and select vertex. Now go over here and select this icon here. It's the auto merge vertices feature. Okay, so with everything in place, we'll select this vertex here and hit J on the keyboard to grab and move our vertex to this vertex over here. It'll snap automatically and merge together. So if we select it once again, you can see that it's now combined with the vertex we moved it to. And as you can see, using this technique is very fast and quite reliable. Finally, we have our last example. It's the same example from the first technique. So we have two separate objects here, so we'll just join them together using Control J. But instead of going into edit mode this time, we're going to add a modifier. So click in the modifier tab over here and go to add modifier and select weld. Now it looks like nothing's happened, but if we enable X-ray mode and enable statistics, then select our cube, you can see when we scroll through the slider, that it's merging our vertices together. Again, don't push it too far and you should be fine. Once you're happy with the distance, go to this arrow over here, select apply to merge your vertices together. Okay, so that's merging or welding in a nutshell. So if you found this video helpful, feel free to give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll try and help you out. That's all from me, I'll see you around.